Good afternoon, Whipplers. Chad Phillips. I got Trench here with me today, mixing up the podcast a little bit. This is episode number seven. Today, we're just going to kind of go over all the teams, talk about where we're at here, a little more through the halfway point in the season. Uh, we'll come up with a player of the week later. But first, I want to tell you guys how difficult it is going to be to get into the PLW. If you don't get in right now, you're not going to get in. This league is going to get so competitive, and it's going to get to a point where it's gonna be it's gonna be just full. Eight teams on, on Monday, Thursday, four teams on Tuesday, and that's gonna be it. Tuesday's still got some openings. The way it's gonna work is is the eighth place team is has a chance to be out. And the sixth and seventh place teams are gonna have a one game play and the loser of that also has a chance to be out. And any contending teams that wanna get into the league, they're gonna play against those two teams that have a chance to get relegated. And you might find your team in the league and your team might just be a mix of random players that come show up on Tuesday night ready to get in. What do you think, Trench? You got anything good? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, the competition has gotten more stiff. Um, but how, would pe- how do they get into PLW? They have to join the, t- the, the Tuesday night league all, first. All you got to do is show up on Tuesday, nothing else. And First of all, the teams in the PLW, this, I mean, I'm a little banged up myself now. We're all getting old and getting hurt. This, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> We're not all just getting old and getting hurt. <laughs> You're diving around doing crazy stuff out there. Um, but, yeah, you need to get into the Tuesday Night League and then uh, get with Chad, see how, that, uh, how you guys do it, and you can get to the PLW. But I want to talk about last night. Some of the games that were played. Oh, but before that, let's give it up to we had the all-time amount of viewers last night. Basically, all through the night, um, people were watching all the way up to the Sand Viper Snapper game. But I want to talk about game one. It was Stoneman versus Bombers. And uh, they just really bombed on the Stoneman early. What do you think about that matchup? Uh, the Bombers have been so hot. And clearly, they're, there's no soft spot in their lineup, really. And... Uh... Geez, I, I hate to pick on Dave, but Dave is a guy that you can kind of sneak in out against. And the Bombers only brought four guys for that, that series there. And they, they just bat such a strong lineup. Yeah, they got some holes in the field, but the Stonemen really weren't able to capitalize. Brandon threw both games. and uh, Yeah, I mean, he was a monster on the mound, as he is always. But where'd Hollis come from? I mean, he, he's just crushing the ball into, like, another time zone. Yesterday, what a performance he had. Um, Jim came alive. I think he hit a bomb. TJ, uh, of course, I think he went oppo on a home run as well. Well, geez, Brandon's been a, a – uh, Brandon was kind of just that, like, fighting with the Mendoza line, 200 average, not really any extra base hits, and now he's driving the ball with power nearly every at-bat. You know, I've been noticing Brandon from the very beginning as a lot of eyeballs were on Brandon uh, after he started getting his pitching down. But, yeah, his numbers were a little low off. Offensively, but he was still crushing the ball. Like I always noticed that he's hitting the ball hard, but there's always somebody right there. Now he's kind of spraying it around a little bit. He's a, a oppo. He can pull it, goes dead center. Um, he's got a good eye now. I see him up there. Kind of he understands the, the pitchers a little bit more. So uh, kudos to uh, Brandon Mayo and the whole Bombers team. I know some of you. I wasn't really involved in the preseason power rankings, yeah. Mr. Macho stuff that you guys got going on. I think the Bombers are playing for a championship. And I've been saying that since day one, not publicly out there, but in our little inner circle of Whifflers here at uh, the Hideaway Field. I've been saying it since day one. TJ, I know you know that. TJ, uh, we- I've been on that too, and you know you know that as well. Uh, we let you know early that your team was good. You just had to figure out how to manage it, how to cut some loose ends, and just focus on uh, a strong five-man lineup, which you clearly have done. I'm going to say it right now. I want it to be heard through the Wiffle Ball Nation that it's the Bombers championship to lose. Right now, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm a Sand Viper. I'm all Sand Viper. I'm Team Sand Viper. But from the looks of it, the Bombers have the squad to beat. Tell me no. Uh, Fight me right now. You know, if, I want, if I'm going to say one thing about it, that, that they have played a little bit of a weaker schedule. Uh, if, okay. It, it, it's just a small, small little tidbit. I mean, they, they have a strong schedule coming up at the end of the season. They've already completed their Tomahawks and their Stone Men. And now, now, okay. But they, they've taken care of business, though. Don't get me wrong. Like, we played the Stone Men and we snuck by one zip and lost 2-1 or whatever. They, mm-hmm. they played them and they just... 
smashed them out of the building. What at fourteen to nothing or whatever oh, it was. Man. Whatever it was. I, I think they scored sixteen, which I, was also tied for the highest score ever in a PLW because it was like a walk off. Yeah, don't forget, fifteen can walk it off. So technically, a team could score eighteen. Bases loaded, fourteen, and they hit the grand slam to get the eighteen. And everything in wiffle ball is predetermined. So, like in baseball, normally if it's a two-two game and the bases are loaded and you hit a triple off the wall. You're only going to get a 3-2 victory there. But in wiffle ball, you're going to get the 5-2 victory there because that's a triple and it's three bases. And then when the smoke clears, the game's over. I want to talk a little bit about the Stone Men. Um, I mean, of course, they're down there in the rankings for sure. Levi's super emotional, could get in his head sometimes. Um, I feel like that lineup could, could, is getting better. I feel like they're being a little bit more competitive. Of course, they ran into the Bombers, um, a little bit of uh, pitching woes uh, yesterday. But, I mean, Bird, he's legit. You know, big dude smashing it out there. Um, Levi on the mound, not too bad. Kind of, I'd say, what, league above average Le- maybe? Levi's, Levi's even better than above average because he's, like, really, really good sometimes. And sometimes he just doesn't have it at all. And, like, so that way he's, he's able to win some games and, and then – the, the games that he's losing, they're probably going to lose anyway. So Levi's adding a lot of value to that team for sure with his uh, ability to step it up at times. And I think he expects that he can step it up all the time, and he expects mm-hmm. to just be at that great level. But it's tough. There's a lot of athletes out here that want to uh, succeed too. Only being able to throw 50 mile, 55, there's only so much you can do out there. And it yeah. seems like the league is kind of geared in at that speed now. Like at first it was a little quick, but now – after 25 games for everybody, everybody's kind of honed in on 55. So you Yeah, get- I like the balance of averages throughout the league, just like if you were watching any other sport. Um, Dylan, not, not too bad, man. I feel like he, uh, he's a decent pitcher out there, kind of a, a, a number two for them, would you say? Uh, he, he's, uh, yeah, he's no, pretty, I mean, I don't like how you're starting this one. He got one. rocked he, yesterday. He got ab- the bombers okay. just absolutely rocked him. I but he looked it. like he lost care out there. Like he was like, oh, it's a he go. You just have it at this point. But I mean, it was over. He he he's right, but he's wrong still. I think he's got to compete a little harder sometimes out there. Yeah, I was I was talking to the so men earlier in the game before that game, and I was like, listen, guys. You are in a must-win situation almost because you're down there. You're going to be fighting for those positions. All right, let's uh, go up next between your team, the Warbirds. Let's be quick on this series. <laughs> no, let's, we're going to we're gonna mutilate this one. No, Versus the about. Ones. I've seen you pitch, Chad. I know you're stellar out there. I don't know if you got a little hitch in your step or something or what's going on, but you got smashed down. Dude, like, basically I, I didn't tapped get out. Sma- I didn't get smashed that bad. They did hit a few home runs off me. I yeah. actually only gave up five hits yesterday. That's all I gave up. Three home runs. And I felt like they cup. were very compact, though. They, they were I, compact. I felt it. And, uh, yeah, I didn't have it again, of course. Just that wind blowing out makes it so difficult for the submarine pitcher to get... It, and you know what? How many times did it read? I mean, I, I heard Chen up in the booth talking about 58, 58, 58. He said it like <laughs> 60 times. You know, hey, Chen, that's a great, great idea. And I like that you said 58 and not 60 because it's somewhere reasonable. But I just want you to know that if that speed limit was 58 yesterday, it would have been a different game. I would have been getting some outs. I threw a first pitch strike at 57 or 56. I want to say seven or eight times they took away from me. It was a really, uh, I mean, really tough I don't game. Think they- took it away from you as it's user error. You're the one throwing the ball, so nobody took it away no, no, from if you. If it was a 58 league, man, oh, okay. that's what I'm saying is that no. I would have got some strikes in there yesterday, and it's a different story. But... We'll talk about that uh, 58 I... league uh, another day <laughs> as we uh, have been calculating what 55 would do for everybody to make it a nice and beautiful balance Yeah, it's beautiful. League. It's beautiful. But the runs with the wind been blowing out the last two weeks, it makes you, you really see the variance of, whoa, because we had so many close, low-scoring games, and now we've had the bomber put up 15 runs like 11 straight games or something out there and it's getting it's getting tough you were talking about chen and i know when he was flying in as he has his own personal jet and he comes here on our tarmac here uh uh, premier league wiffle hideaway field he was i know through the chatter he heard that hollis might have taken the home run oh yeah Yeah, Hollis, yeah hollis right yeah i think it got to him when i saw him walk on the field he was focused, man. He even had a little little earbud in, and I think it was the Dalai Lama or something, like, uh, giving him some zen to hit home runs, and he hit four of them, and now I think he's – is he tied with Hollis? Yeah, they're tied at 14 apiece. Taylor Taylor's at nine, and then uh, a couple – I think this one guy was at eight and a couple at seven and a bunch at six. You know how to give a big shout-out to – I was talking to him yesterday as well – was a Dobbins, man. 
I, it was like a breakout game, and he's been ready to explode, and I've had eyes on him for many weeks now. He's got a great swing, and he finally came alive last night. I think he even hit like a center field home run that went like a, oh, near the scoreboard or something crazy. Um, so shout that, out to that. That might have been off of me. I, it might have been. <laughs> it might have been. I, been was it a little the, oppo? It was a like little kind of, pop fly that went like 200 man. feet or something over the scoreboard. Yeah, that was. And they just smashed him. Uh, Goose was alive. I know his wife at home. She was real excited watching her husband. Oh, I threw damage. such a bad pitch to him for that three-run home run. <laughs> I came in with the guy on third and nobody out, and I got uh, two of them out. And I got Dobbins and Schmitty both out. And uh, oh man, I pitched around Chen. I, God, Chen, I do have to give you one one piece of credit here. Man, you won't chase nothing. I've watched you in the film. I've watched he every game. Sometimes. He does not chase. He will not no. swing at a ball. It's incredible. Great uh, strike zone awareness. Yeah. Uh, that was out, that was without Adam Couts either. Oh, where was Couts? I could have used him to get out last night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought Couts made all the outs. I don't. I don't even know. All right, we're gonna go to the next game. We're gonna go Tomahawks Calicos. I had a discussion with a few of the Tomahawks players before the game. Same situation as the Stone Men. They are down there swirling around at the bottom of the swamp, and they need to climb out so they're not dead. They don't. They could still stay in that league. Um, well, the Calicos they they overslept their little uh, cat nap uh, yesterday afternoon, and mm -hmm. uh, somehow Nick is he's trying to blame me for this, but he told his team it was an eight o'clock game. It was a seven thirty game. He's lucky we like him. We waited around till about 7.42 to start that. They had yeah. three guys. I think Joe rolled in right, right after, and then Alex came in uh, soon after. But uh, they let Nikki, Nikki D pitch that game, and um, I don't know. The Tomahawks got some hits. and Yeah, I noticed his name. I was looking at some ERAs, and uh, Nick was up there all of a sudden with like a one-point or something ERA. I don't know. If I didn't catch the uh, tail end of that because our games were coming up. But um, did he hit another home run yesterday? Nick did. He hit another big home run, too. He was in a big spot again, Man, too. He is just coming alive. Uh, it just seems it's like all his hits are home runs, basically. He's just like the, the Barry Bonds up there. Just, yeah. A few I mean, he's smashing them. A few weeks ago, I called him out for not really helping his team very much mm. privately. And he, uh, I was well, joking now around. now it's out but, there. Yeah, it's out there now. And he, it, it was he took offense to it. He told me he took offense to it. I told him that he wasn't producing any war for his team, per se, and he was just kind of floating through the season. And all of a sudden, uh, he's won them like four games in a row, and, yeah, he looks wow. really good out there. Really good. The Tomahawks. Um, what a – I mean, look at their stats. I, they got people. a win yesterday. They, they picked up one win yesterday yeah, they got, there. They, they split with the Calicos right there. What was game one? I forget. 7-4 they won. The, the, okay. It looked like the Calicos were up, and then – they just got – Tomahawks got – in the fourth inning, I think they got five or six hits. And, and then I think uh, Al, was Alex on the mound in the second game. And yeah. He, he was just on fire. Unbelievable. His watching, command. Uh, it was probably one of his better, if not best, pitching performance. Uh, he was just hitting every little zone well, and nobody could get – Well, he did give up two solo home runs. To okay. That was a 2 nothing game and Alex gave up two solo home runs back-to-back. -back. What a great at-bat by Casey Taravella, I believe his last name is pronounced. Mm -hmm. A seven or eight pitch at bat, and he hit it over the center field fence. What a great, great job by him to tie that game at two. And then their pitching fell apart in the uh, the fifth inning. But what was the question you just asked again? I thought he pitched a, a really great game, or was that the oh, week before? I, I, that was the week before. No, oh, that, no, okay. Well, that was this week. No, that was this oh, week. So okay. I'm, this I'm is backwards. yeah, 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 Monday. That was Monday's games. He pitched. Uh, Against the one, Stein pitched game one, and Alex came in. And That's right. They pitched shut the last him down. three and two thirds, gave up nothing, and then threw a five inning, uh, five inning shutout. It wasn't I Stein. Ones, Stein didn't do shit. It was Alex. I think the ones kind of felt that a little bit, and they came in just on fire, really uh, focused that. Yeah, uh, we weren't very thing. happy to face them with the wind <laughs> blowing out last night. I, I was hoping Randy Dalby was going to help, but uh, Randy got. We'll kinda, get into that. That's a whole yeah, different that's segment. A, that's a different show. I want to go into the Sand Vipers versus the Snappers. And, of course, I was on the mound for game one, and uh, I think I got to the third oh, – it was a third inning. Fourth inning. You got, well, you got one out in the fourth. So you pitched three and a third that game. Yeah, right? I, uh, I think I gave up three runs, a couple home runs, one to uh, Taylor, I believe, and then one to Jesse. I can't, I can't beat him. I can't beat Jesse Caps. I'm putting it out there. He's very difficult to get out. He has great first pitch awareness. He's got he's he's got that tennis instinct where he sees the ball so well and his head is so still. And now he's learning how to swing with two hands, kind of better. And he's, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's. I still kind of have a hole in Jesse's swing. I don't I don't think uh, I shouldn't even say anything because I'm sure he'll hit a two run home run off me coming up. Next oh, they're time. coming. I mean, there's a lot of games. I, I'm sure they're coming to be played, but um. 
What about a grand slam by old Trenchy? <laughs> Come on, man. That's enough. I mean, I called that in the booth. I, <laughs> I didn't hear I was announcing that. I, I just was announcing that it seems like every time they loaded, Trench hits a grand slam. He's, he's, uh, he's a 100 hitter, but when, uh, when the bases are loaded, he's like five for six with four grand slams and a triple. Like, it's incredible. I don't understand what... <laughs> and, one... and I've hit into a triple play. <laughs> and, and I got the exact opposite thing going on. I've had a chance to win the Warbirds like six, seven, eight games. If I could just find a double anywhere along the way, we, we lose 2-1 every damn game. And then yesterday, I'm raking the ball off the yeah, wall, and it's wow. absolutely meant nothing. It meant absolutely nothing. I got the Davila syndrome now. I'm just... I'm not helping my team win. It's terrible. <laughs> Is that a coined phrase you made I, up? I don't know. I just made that up now. I hope that uh, flies So well. Grand Slam, I'm kind of stoked. I'm up 4 nothing. Of course, I go out there, give up three, come back. <laughs> I don't know what happened after that, but it was like an intense game one. Well, two extra inning games you guys wow. played last night. I mean, geez, the snappers and the... You know, Adam seems... came up clutch, didn't he, with that oppo uh, single that scored uh, the, the winning runs for game one. Um, of course, Casey ahead of me, what a job he did getting on base. Um, and then Tom, he went yard as well. And Tom so. is a really tough out. It's just no way to, I mean, I was even throwing Tom 80 BP pitches. I don't, yeah. I don't think he swung and missed once. It's just like, where can I throw a pitch to get him to swing and miss? The answer is there's nowhere. Yeah, he leads the league in sound effects after every swing and he misses. Oh, he does? Nice. Absolutely. I love it. He gives all... All his energy. He can't even everybody. believe he swung and missed. It's like, <laughs> how did that happen? I, it's, oh, uh, yeah. And then game two, uh, Taylor's on the mound, right? He, I didn't get a hit. He threw all six innings there. He gave up three hits to you guys. I didn't, uh, there's a lot of games I don't remember yeah, I exactly. Think, I think really. Adam got a couple and maybe Tom or, or Casey or somebody. But um, Taylor, just another monster on the mound. I don't feel like he's got nasty stuff, but he's got great pitch location. I think he got me twice. Looking on a uh, one of them was like hit the bar high and outside, or the first pitch was down and outside, hitting the, the bar, and then comes right back with a high and outside. And it was like he just froze me. Taylor's throwing seven pitches, he's got six drops and a slider. Man, <laughs> and he starts three of the drops up high, and they go this way, this way, and this way, and three of them low, and they go the same. And then he's got one slider that comes in, he's really tough to gauge on. And that slider, it seems like he time. Uh, I mean, I I've only been watching for the last couple of weeks his, his, his repertoire that he's developed, but he really seems to time that slider when the batters are looking for the drop and it just gets by you. So, yeah, he's been really tough out there. I want to go into a small segment of – I've heard this name a lot, and it was Ryan Dalby. Randy. Or Randy, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Yep. Uh, a lot of talk about Randy. Coming into the league, I know you were excited. You're like, we got Randy today. Why don't you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, during BP, I mean, during pregame, he was he. I was I thought he was going to struggle keeping it under 55 for sure. I mean, the guy can throw 88 mile an hour right down the middle every pitch if he wants to. And so, for to cripple somebody of that skill set is is what the PLW is all about. You you got to learn to dominate in different ways. You can't just dominate with power. You got to find that finesse way to dominate so yeah you always say that word finesse and i agree with you it's a very like finesse kind of league because it's 55 mile an hour and, uh under so you got to find your ways of course you could uh tease with the, the 60s and 58s i'll go back to a pitch uh uh with the sand vipers and snappers in a second when i was talking to my manager adam with taylor up but yeah you have to have, have some finesse in this league but what about the runs he gave up? I want—I don't know how the long the segment is. 19 hits and 16 runs in three and two thirds. <laughs> oh, I mean, it, no errors there either. Like I, I think somehow my team made three errors in the brief two innings I pitched yesterday. But Randy was just—I yeah. I dropped one in the outfield on him. It was a tough play. I, yeah. I, I expected to make it. And I was trolling him a little bit. Um, I was like, "Welcome to PLW" type stuff because I've seen a lot of people come into this league. Thinking that they're just going to come in and erupt. Tom Gannon is a perfect example of that. Came in early, thought he was hot stuff, whatever. He couldn't uh, hit the ball, and he admitted that to me in left center. I think he, uh, he was just like, I can't hit the ball. And I was like, you better start hitting the ball because I was like on the same level as him. And I was like, listen, came around, started understanding uh, the finesse part 
of uh, the league, and now he's like leading the league in doubles and uh, sound effects after a uh, strikeout. I remember I got him going with a little stupid baby slider. I lobbed to him, and he you crushed it. You cannot do that. That, that was his first hit in the league. He was like 0 for 12, and I'm like, oh, this kid can't hit. Yeah. Here you go, have this one. Wow. Listen, I did that on my very first home run I gave up. It was to Alex Carrasco, and I was like, what's this kid all about? Never really had like discussions yet, whatever. And you know, sometimes you just want to throw one in there to get a strike. Unloaded, it was gone. And I've done that a couple more times just trying to work that uh, strike zone a little bit, and they're gone. People hit them. They crush them. Um, but back to a pitch, I want to go back to when Taylor won it. What, what was the scenario? First and third, or... Where are we? Uh, game two, or game one, or... Uh, what was... Oh, game two. I think I was in relief. I got out of that bases loaded jam that uh, Tom put me in. Okay, yep. Remember that? Yes, I do. I went to Tom before he pitched... And I said, do not put me in a bases loaded jam. And that's what he did. So I come in there, I forget who I was facing. It might have been Manny <clears throat> or Taylor. It was a big out, bases loaded, I, two I, outs. I think it was Taylor. I actually think it was Taylor. And I, I think I jammed him and he hit it to Walker and Walker yep, stepped on Yep, I think you're right. I think you're right. It's hard to get Taylor out, man. I mean, he, I threw him every pitch I got and he hit each one of them harder and harder than the previous. So it's, yeah. it's really tough to slide pitches by these Good hitters. You know, I was ahead of the curve for quite a while and able to trick people with my wiffle skills. But now with only a 55 cap, it's just... It's and just better quality people playing. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Not only are the players that were average <laughs> all now above average, uh, uh, 20 players have come into this league now to to display their skill set and uh, the, their baseball skills per se. And, th and this is baseball on crack. It's... It's quicker uh, games. Did you see baseball and crack? Oh, yeah, baseball and crack. Okay. It's everything's exaggerated out here. The ball's exaggerated. The distance is exaggerated. The innings are exaggerated. The players are exaggerated. It just it's just uh, it's just really tricky. It's yeah. a really tricky game. So here here it is. I think we were up one, top of the six. I think we scored one right, and so we're up one now. It's the bottom of the six. I think they hit a double off me or whatever or a single. It's first and third. Taylor's up. And I go to Adam, and I go, what do you think I should do right here? And he tells me, I don't know. He's like, I don't know. Walking wouldn't be too bad. But I was like, eh, I'm going to go after him, right? He goes, okay, throw a 65-mile-an-hour fastball at him. Right down the pipe. He crushes it, oppo, single, whatever, wins the game. They, the roar happens, so I can't hear the miles per hour. So I run up to the, the backstop, and I was like, what was it? And he's like, Mark, he's like, oh, I can't get it yet. And then uh, Adam told me it was a 64 mile an hour. Oh, you didn't throw it hard enough. Maybe if I would have got that mile per hour, maybe it would have worked. But man, I was talking to Stein earlier today too um, about that at bat. And he was like, listen, it doesn't matter how fast it goes down the pipe. Somebody of that caliber is going to smash it. And that's just how the cookie crumbled. But uh Good hit for the for the win right there. Yeah, it was good to see the snappers get that second game. They played hard last night, and uh, they it's intense out there. I mean, it's, <laughs> it was it's freaking man. intense out there. We had a player snap it, snap the favorite bat of the league. Oh man! So it seems was like it Adam. I don't even think we want to reveal the player on the show. Oh man! On, on the show, let's not even go there on the show. They we, it's been revealed to the league and whatever, and you can and but it's just so much pressure on him, and they lost a game, and they needed another game, and. But that orange bat has uh, used by like half the league, I think. Wow. It's the uh, Chris Warfield, the, the war chicken. He taped that one up, and uh, he's been assigned. Uh, it's, he's home with COVID here now, so they've everybody's bringing him some tape and Absolutely. some bats, and keep he's going to tape him up this weekend. Keep him busy back home. Wow. So yeah, the, rest in peace, orange bat. I'll grab the backhoe and, and put it near the rescue and we'll ha we'll make a little monument. Yeah, the players and were trying to get that grip first. Don't don't bury that until you get the <laughs> oh, grip off that maybe bat. Maybe I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll cut it or yeah, cut the bat. What we'll make gonna, a big uh, save uh, it. tombstone for all the wiffle ball players to write their names on it. Um, <clears throat> my voice, I'm losing my voice. We've got today. about three or four minutes here left, Trent. You wanna, let's, let's go into player of the week here now. You got some numbers there or some made up numbers or, I mean, I know who it is. We, we already decided. To me, it's Hollis. It's Hollis. I think Hollis is really um, showcasing some of his plant-powered uh, power right there. Just unloading. He, he's seeing the ball real well. And he, before the game, um, I was just warming up a little bit, messing around. And he came up to me and he says, I'm here to hit. And walked away. 
Nice. And then he, he, he did He's that. super intense out there, too. He really does depict how intense this league is. And uh, hopefully he can keep it from a nine down to an eight, you know, it's at times. But it's, it's good to see the... I like when the nine comes out, though. He gets fired. That's fine. Up. As long as he keeps it at nine, it's good. Mm-hmm. It, can't, it, it has to stay there. But he's a good dude. And uh, it's good to see him uh, really performing well this week. Very, very tough to get him out. Even a, a couple pitches have told me how they're, they're just intimidating his stance and just... It's tough to get pitches by him. Real quick, before we end the show, uh, talk about, like, uh, we're doing home run derbies, we're doing tournaments. Oh, goodness gracious. Come this, on. This, get, all right, yeah, I need to bring it. it. So this weekend at Ranch Island, we have a big tournament. It's only a $250 buy-in, but that doesn't matter. It's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. we got eight teams in there. Teams are reinforced, and <laughs> yeah. it's already how good the Sand Vipers are, and the Sand Vipers added Chen, and it's already how good the Bombers are, and the Bombers add Sansone, and, wow. and the Warbirds added Stevenson, because, I don't know. Because why not? Because why not? So it's Premier League Wiffle here at Hideaway Field. That's why. This is why we do it. Very intense action. I think it's going to be some of the best wiffle ball. It, it's going to be really good. It's going to be so intense. Yeah, Make yeah. sure you we watch got the Twitch uh I think three out-of-state teams have come in, and... Uh, I'm not that familiar with the schedule yet. It's I haven't had a chance to look into it. We've been so busy with the with the league play. I really haven't got to pay much attention to the tournament coming up here. But uh, tonight we do have a home run derby. Oh yeah, seven, talk about that seven for a p.m. home run derby. It should be it should be pretty incredible. I mean, we got guys hitting ridiculous home runs, and uh, it's it's Adam and Tom and Chen and I, Hollis. I, I might and, join last minute. I don't know. I have to get in there, Adam Trench. Well, I mean, why not? You're you got that slow pitch swing. I didn't hit any last year in any of the like uh, wiffle ball that we played, other than co-ed. And I was like, am I ever going to be able to hit one? And I'm kind of having a decent like year for myself. So uh, I'm like Snoop Dogg. I want to thank me. For putting in the work, and I want to thank me. For <laughs> and I want to thank, thank me, me for announcing all those games last night. <laughs> it's and, high energy, man. I'm, it takes a lot to uh, get this going, but I want to thank all our all our team behind this as well. But listen, tune in for the home run derby tonight. Then we have the tournament uh, throughout the weekend, and then back to Monday. Uh, six, six games Monday night. We, we shortened the skate a little bit just because mm-hmm. of how tired everybody's going to be. We. We knocked one doubleheader off and rescheduled it. I can't remember the exact uh, three uh, three games that were going. I don't have. I thought I have it here, but I don't. But Premier League Wiffle guys here. Oh, at Sand Vipers! Field. We play you guys to open up Monday. Monday is uh, five p.m. Sand Vipers Warbirds, and then uh, that's going to be a Tom Casey matchup, I believe, or Tom. We'll Walker. see if we'll see if any of the Warbirds still have an arm left to pitch those games on Monday. Are you just talking about yourself? Uh, a little bit, I think well, so. Well, Dolby's still around on Monday, so that's good. <laughs> Hopefully he gets all the kinks out this weekend. And Absolutely. He'll, he'll probably throw two shutouts against the Sand Vipers on Monday. They, they don't really deserve to score any runs anyways. So. Yeah, that's a big drop down when you're a pitcher at 80 miles an hour or something. Now you're yeah, it's like a hard That's got to be a really hard, hard adjustment. Yeah, yeah. And he felt it, and the players took advantage. But oh, listen, guys. Oh, they use ahead. scuff balls too, dude. That's another thing. They use scuff balls. All these new teams, they use scuff balls. We use clean balls. The balls move opposite directions. They use these... $300 bats that are weapons, oh, and we okay. use these yellow bats. That Now we've added some tape, so it's made it a little better. But we mm-hmm. use this little two-ounce bat here, and they're using these moonshots and these whatever brand they have there that all cost a couple hundred bucks. So Wow. I never, I'm like Plus the 55, and then what? what there's another one, a little caveat that makes it difficult for them. I, too much going on here. Yeah. Where's Listen. Casey at? Where did he go? <laughs> How's, how are we going to end this show? We don't have our... Our film guy. Where, where's our show. production crew? We have nobody here. They <laughs> we left got us alone. Nothing else. <laughs> Listen, guys. Monday night, tune in all throughout the weekend. Tune in. Lots of stuff going on. Um, I'll probably be commentating right after the Sam Viper Warbird games on Monday. Make sure you tune in. This is Chad Trench. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. I'll be calling that All Star game tonight. Tune oh in. yeah, yep. I forgot about that. See you guys.